Hello guys, today I will tell you the story about my stepson Keith. I will give you some background about us first. My name is Isadora and I'm married to a wonderful man named Max. Keith is Max's son from his previous marriage. Max's first marriage was a disaster and his ex-wife was truly crazy. They ended up divorcing when Keith was young and surprisingly his mom didn't want to take any of his responsibilities. Hell, she gave up her rights to Keith because she didn't want to pay child support. Keith was young so Max never bad-mouthed his mom to him. So he had no idea what was going on. He found out much later how badly his mom had messed up. When Max dated and introduced me to him, Keith started to hate me. He really disliked me a lot. I tried hard to develop a good relationship with him, but he was cold towards me. Mind you, he was 12 when I met him. He told Max that he didn't want him to pay attention to anyone other than him. Yep, this boy was exactly like his controlling and abusive mother. Max had tried his best to make us get along, but nothing worked. Hell, we didn't even get married until Keith was completely on board with it. So we got married and I started to take a lot of Keith's financial responsibilities. I never expected him to see or call me mom, but I was ready to take care of him completely. He was a child after all, so me and Max split all of Keith's bills. I even got him a car when he turned 18 and paid for half of his college tuition. Since he never held a job, we also paid his rent and bills because he wanted to live separately. Only his car stayed in our garage because his new apartment had no space. Things were surprisingly cordial between us after Keith moved out. He kept contact with his birth mom who badmouthed me, but the distance between us made things bearable. Guys, I was genuinely starting to believe that all was well. That was until Keith came home with a ridiculous request. He said, My friends are planning a trip to Vegas next month. I'm going with them as well. You need to give me the money to pay for everything. I'll need around $8,000. Are you kidding me right now? You want me to pay you $8,000 so that you can go gamble and do underage drinking with friends? Do you think I'm crazy? Relax, Dad. It's not a big deal at all. A lot of people my age are going to Vegas. It's not a problem at all. Everything will be fine. Keith, you are asking for a lot of money. We are already paying a lot for you. I don't think this is a reasonable request you are making. Oh, please. You shouldn't be talking at all. You are sitting at home and doing nothing. You don't get to talk about money. I know Dad bought you a diamond necklace last month. He can definitely give me money if he can pay for your ridiculous demands. I was pretty hurt by what Keith said. Yes, I was sitting at home for a while because I lost my job recently. I was already looking for a new job and simply needed some time. As for the diamond necklace, it was Max's anniversary gift for me. He got me a $10,000 diamond necklace from Blue Nile. I didn't ask for it. He gave it to me because he wanted to. Keith didn't like that one bit as usual. Still, I didn't know how he thought he would give in to his ridiculous request. I was seriously very upset while Max was pissed. He said, You will not talk to my wife like that, Keith. She never asked for anything. I gave it to her out of my own wish. You don't get to say how I spend my money. But Dad, if she gets to have such an expensive necklace, why can't I get money for my trip? You are delusional if you think I would give you that much money just to have fun and do illegal activities. But Dad, you're not being fair. I've already heard enough, Keith. If you want to go, you will have to find a way yourself. You are an adult, so I can't stop you. But I sure as hell won't be paying for it. Keith looked upset, but couldn't say anything to his father. Max was already pretty mad, so he didn't poke his dad anymore. He did, however, give me a very nasty look before leaving the house. Honestly, I was freaking pissed at him too. And that night, I kept thinking about what he said and how he had insulted me. I was feeling slighted and disrespected. Also, I had a bad feeling that Keith was going to do something stupid. God, I was right about that. A week later, I found out that my diamond necklace was missing. 
I usually kept it locked in a safe, but it was in my closet because I had a family event the previous day. Coincidentally, Keith stayed over at our place that night as well. He had left that morning in the afternoon when I went to put away my necklace. I saw that it was missing along with the case. I panicked, but had a sinking feeling that it was Keith. Still, I called Max to make sure he didn't displace it. He was clueless as well, but told me to check the security cameras in the hallway. When I did check the camera footage, my doubts were confirmed. Keith had gone to my room when I was in the shower and had taken my necklace. I was freaking pissed when I saw it. I immediately called Keith and started to record the conversation. I said, Keith, did you freaking take my diamond necklace? Answer me truthfully. Oh boy, you figured it out fast. I'll give you that, Isadora. Yes, it was me who took it. Congratulations on figuring it out. Do you think this is funny? You need to give my necklace back, Keith. Bring it back right now before I call your dad and tell him everything. You are never getting your necklace back, Isadora. I've already sold it and used the money to fund my Vegas trip. Guys, I really had a hard time wrapping my head around what he had said. Keith had not only stolen my necklace, but also sold it to fund his trip. Now, I know why he wanted to go to Vegas so desperately. He was already so greedy for money that he had stolen things from his family. I was shocked and didn't know what to say. The only thing I managed to say was, What? Keith, why would you do that? That was my anniversary gift. Your father bought it for me so lovingly. You had no right to do this. No, you have no right to have a diamond necklace, Isadora. You can't have expensive things when you're unemployed. You are just wasting my father's money on stupid things. I can't let you do that to my dad. So you stole from me? Sold my necklace? Just because I'm unemployed doesn't give you the right to steal from me. What kind of dumb logic is that? You need to go and get my necklace back. Nope, that is not happening. You are already enjoying plenty of nice things on my dad's money. If you need the necklace so badly, you should get a job and buy one for yourself. Listen to me, Keith. I'm done having this argument with you. Go back to whatever pawn shop you sold my necklace and bring it back. You have the money from the sale, so just give and get it back. Do that and we can put this behind us. Go to hell, Isadora. I'm not scared of you and your threats. I don't take threats from someone who doesn't even pay for her own things. I already spent the money anyway, so there's nothing you can do. Maybe next time you'll think twice before mooching off my dad and making him buy you expensive things. Keith said those words and promptly hung up on me. I was literally staring at my phone for a while trying to make sense of what had just happened. Never. In my entire life, had I expected Keith to behave this way? Yes, I was unemployed at the time, but before that, I was working my butt off. I was paying for my own things and contributing to both his college tuition and regular expenses. I knew he and I didn't have a great relationship, but I still considered him my responsibility to some extent. I had no idea he would go to such great lengths. All this for a freaking friend's trip that he could definitely do without. I am not ashamed to say this, but I did break down crying for a bit. No matter what, I did see Keith grow up for the last 10 years. Even though he disliked me, I just couldn't bring myself to dislike a child. I understood that he was a child and shouldn't be forced to be nice, but now that he has turned into an adult, I know that his behavior is completely unacceptable. Years of me trying to make sure he has a good life, and this was how he repaid me. It wasn't even about the necklace anymore. It was about the fact that he had blatantly disrespected me and took something precious from me. When the tears had dried up, I was beyond pissed. Keith had shown no remorse and acted smug when I warned him about the consequences. He thought that I would sit around and do nothing while he enjoyed the money he got from pawning off my necklace. Well, he was dead wrong. I'm not an enabler, and I will definitely not forgive a full-grown adult who knows what he's doing. So I decided to talk to my husband and tell him what happened. I showed him the security footage and the call recording for good measure. Well, he was appalled. He said, This is freaking ridiculous. I can't believe Keith would do something like this. What the hell is even wrong with him? 
I think we're partly responsible for this, and so is his mother. His mother has been feeding him a lot of bullshit about me and you. He had been taking out that anger on us in different ways for the past few years, but we also indulged him by not giving strict punishments. Maybe you're right about that. You really did do a lot for Keith, but he seems to have no respect for that. Hell, he seems to lack the basic decency to accept his mistake. This is just unforgivable. Max, your son is not a child anymore. He's freaking 20 and should have known better. We cannot let him get away with this. What he did is actually a felony. I know that, Isadora. I can't get these things out of my head. Something needs to be done. This is just unacceptable. I think I'm going to leave this to you. What do you want to do? It's your stuff he's stolen, and you are the one who he has insulted. I was a little taken aback by the fact that Max was giving me free reign to do what I wanted about this situation. He was actually pretty pissed, and he meant business. His logic about why I should decide the consequences was also completely on point. It did make me feel heard and validated. I was glad that he was leaving the decisions to me, but... I was still a little unsure whether Max would accept what I had planned for Keith, so I decided to run it by him to make sure we were both on board with this. I said, Thank you for asking for my input, Max. I really appreciate that you understand how messed up this situation is, but I should warn you that I have some serious plans with Keith. I understand that, Isadora. You can tell me what you want to do. I won't stop you. Max, I'm done paying for Keith. I don't want a cent of my hard-earned money to go towards him. I'm going to stop paying for his college tuition and I'm going to take away his car. He has turned into a very hateful person and has no gratitude for what I do for him. I don't want him to profit off me anymore. Fair enough, Isadora. I think all your plans are pretty reasonable. I don't see why it should be a problem. There's something else too, Max. I want to press charges against him if he doesn't bring back my necklace. Since the bill has been in your name, you would have to do it. We can ask Keith to bring back the necklace, but since he doesn't have money, I don't know how he will do it. This is a serious step, Isadora. Well, we will try to make him take out loans or something to get the necklace back. If everything else fails, we will have to press charges for insurance purposes anyway. He might be my son, but I will not support him in becoming a thief. Having Max's support meant a lot to me. I didn't know if ultimately we were going to press charges, but we were sure of getting the necklace back. With everything in place, I started to enlist Keith's vehicle for sale. Within a few hours, I had a buyer who I knew personally. Since it was a fairly new car... I got a good deal and he didn't make a hassle because he had seen the car in person. Actually, he lived two blocks from where my stepson was renting an apartment. It was just my plain luck that he was willing to pay cash because he was in desperate need of a vehicle as his daughter's birthday gift. So I got the paperwork arranged so that he could pick it up soon. The next day, I went over to my stepson's apartment with Max. As soon as he saw us both, he was a little nervous. Max said, we need to have a little chat about what you did, Keith. I don't know what you're talking about, Dad. What is this about? Have you already forgotten the fact that you have stolen and pawned my necklace? What are you even saying, Isadora? I know nothing about that. Dad, your wife has gone crazy. I can't believe she would accuse me of something like that. So, you were saying that you didn't steal her necklace? No, Dad. Why would I even do that? Do you doubt me that bad? I swear to you, Isadora is putting ideas into your head. I didn't steal anything. Keith was acting all innocent and clueless. It would have been convincing if we didn't have solid proof of his stealing. He isn't a very bright person, after all. He may have forgotten the fact that I have cameras in my house. Or maybe he thought that he would get away with his actions again. But Keith's innocent facade crumbled when Max said... Quit lying like an idiot, Keith. You know we have cameras in the house. I clearly saw you exiting our room while tucking something in your jacket. Plus, Isadora has a call recording where you confessed and also said some horrible things to her. Dad, I'm so sorry I was desperate for the money, so I sold the necklace. Isadora doesn't need something so fancy anyway. She's unemployed and doesn't have anywhere to go. 
I needed the money from the necklace. You needed the money for a ridiculously expensive friend's trip to Vegas? Are you freaking kidding me, Keith? How entitled are you? This is just plain unacceptable. You need to return the necklace right now. Trust me, Keith. I will call the cops on you if you don't. Dad, you can't. You can't do that. I'm your son. You can't call the cops on your own son. I can and I will call the cops when I catch you stealing from anyone. I'm already at the end of my wits with you, Keith. You have done something horrible and said horrible things about your stepmom. All these years, she did a lot for you and this is how you pay her back. You are a failure of a man, Keith. Keith now knew that he had screwed up. His father had never spoken to him this way and he knew he was in deep trouble. Keith also knew that calling his mother to help wouldn't work as well. His mom would run once she heard that money was involved. So Keith was now completely at our mercy, but he was still unyielding. He said, Dad, I can't get this necklace back. I already spent the money on non-refundable tickets and hotels. I have very little money left. It won't be enough. Well, in that case, you better cough up the money before we press charges. Dad, will you seriously take this mooching woman's side over your own son? Why does she get to have a necklace while you can't even pay for my trip? That woman doesn't deserve anything. She's an unemployed parasite. Did you forget the fact that I have been paying a good amount of money towards your upbringing as well? Your mother didn't give us a cent. I, along with your dad, paid for everything. If there is an unemployed parasite here, it's you, Keith. How dare you call me a parasite? I don't need your freaking money, Isadora. I have my dad for that. You can go to hell. Well, I'm glad that you said you don't need my money. You are going to have to remember that because I will stop paying for your college and will take away your car. Keith looked at me shocked. He had no idea or had forgotten the fact that I was also contributing to his college fund. And the fact that his car was in my name was also something he never bothered to remember. So when I threatened to take away my financial support, he was shocked to learn how much it would affect him. He said, no, no, you can't take away my car. It's my car and you have no right over it. Well, did you forget that I own that car? I am the one who paid for it. It's my name on the deed. Now, since you're unemployed, you don't deserve a car, so I have already sold it to someone. You better give back the keys before I call the cops. You sold my freaking car? What is wrong with you, Isadora? Dad, why are you silent? Are you really going to let her do this? Don't you dare try to act entitled in front of me, Keith. That wasn't your car. It was Isadora's. We had given you everything and you showed us no respect, especially to Isadora. You don't deserve her kindness anymore. You better come up with a way to pay for your college and your bills because Isadora is not giving you another cent and nor am I. Max made it clear to Keith that he was being cut off for good. From Keith's expression, it was clear that he wasn't expecting this at all. I couldn't believe how nonchalant and entitled he had become. He had expected to get away with what happened. He was now in full panic mode and ready to cry. His voice was shaking and he was looking around trying to think of something. He said, Dad, please don't do that. Where will I go? How will I finish college or pay rent? I don't know, Keith. You're an adult already. Maybe you should... Get off your lazy butt and get a job. Remember, you have to get the necklace back as well. I can't work, Dad. You can't expect me to suddenly work. I have college and you're taking away my car too. What will I do? Well, that's your problem now, Keith. We did what we could, but you just wouldn't be happy with all the privileges you had. Now, you will learn the hard way that this wolf won't let you exploit anyone. We will be leaving now and you have two days before I call the cops on you. Before we leave, you need to hand over the car keys now, Keith. I wasn't kidding when I said that I sold your car. It will be picked up in a few days. You better start getting used to public transport because you will need it. Keith was about to yell at me again, but Max's expression shut him up real quick. He quietly handed over the keys and stayed silent. We left shortly after. A little after we left, Keith and his mom started to blow up our phones. We immediately blocked Keith's mom because there was no reason for us to stay connected to her anymore. We should have blocked her ages ago. 
Anyway, it's never too late now, is it? The next few days went by in a rush, and Keith kept showing up at our house begging to be forgiven. We had already stopped giving him any money. Plus, his dad kept reminding him about the police report. In the end, after two days, he brought my necklace back, but he kept crying to us, saying, I had to take the money from a friend of mine. I really don't have much anymore. I don't know how I'll pay him back. We already told you how you can pay him back, Keith. You better start looking for jobs now. But, but there are only minimum wage jobs available. I can't work in freaking McDonald's. What will my friends think of me? Beggars can't be choosers, Keith. You should have thought about everything before stealing from us and insulting the hand that feeds you. The most I can do is pay for your college tuition next year, but that's it. You won't be getting anything else from me. Thanks, Dad. But what about my car? Unemployed people can't have cars, Keith. Remember what you said? Your car's already sold. You can take a look into our garage and see for yourself. Keith hung his head as his own words were thrown back at him. He couldn't even say anything in reply because he knew he had messed up. He simply turned around and left. We didn't cut him off entirely, though. He was Max's son, after all. Max did stay in contact, but stopped helping him financially. Keith was struggling to pay his rent and other bills, and we also cannot forget the fact that he had borrowed money from his friend. So Keith had to get a job after all. In fact, he didn't get just one job, he actually ended up getting two. He was juggling college and two jobs to make his debts go away. Also, he was living in a friend's garage and paying his own bills. His pride and entitled behavior came back to bite him in the butt. He still keeps calling us to apologize, and he had sincerely apologized to me as well, but it hasn't changed. He's still financially cut off, and it looks like he will be miserable for a while now. Keith learned the hard way that life won't let him get away with bad behavior every time.